Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in today's video, we're gonna talk again about this Send to Creality print add-in that we walked through in a video last week. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna attempt to answer some of the questions or problems that have come up with this and hopefully give you a bit more information on how to fix it. So when we first made that app, we did all the coding, we tested it out, it worked, good to go. But as you start to use these things more and more, you start to find these little problems that still need to be addressed. And because this is somewhat of a simple app, the fix is actually fairly simple, but let's talk about the two problems that came up. The first problem is that if you launched the app or started the add-in when you had a model open and you used it, it was great, it worked for that model and everything was good. However, you can see in this case, that's not the model that I just tried to export. Uh, the problem is what ends up happening is when it was launched, it was using whatever model was open at the time, and then it would always export that model. The second problem is that it wouldn't run at startup. It just wouldn't work, and there were problems associated with that, and I'm gonna go through how to fix it in this video. So if you did end up following along with that video and you had problems, this video should help you. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the add-in and we're gonna edit. So when we edit the add-in, I'm just going to go over a couple of basic things, but if you didn't follow along with the first video, I strongly suggest you check that one out because we walked through where to find the code, where to copy it, how to modify the default add-in template, and so on. But the first thing that I want to note is the initial part of the program that runs is this .py, this Python file. It does commands start, and what this is going to do is it's going to go into this commands section and it's gonna run init.py. So inside of here, we've got our command dialog and it's basically starting the command dialog. What we did was we cleaned out everything else that was in this default add-in and we just left the thing that we wanted to work with. So once it runs this part, it's then gonna to jump to this entry.py. And here is where the problem is. Now the main issue here is that when we copied everything, everything here from getting the active product all the way down to this for loop, I put it at the top of the program and it worked when we ran it. But the problem is if you try to run this at startup, the default file in Fusion is an untitled document. And there's not actually any geometry associated with it. So it's not able to run until there's actually a model there. The second thing that happens is if you run this program or you start the add-in, when you have a model open, then what ends up happening is it's just grabbing that as its root component. And it doesn't matter which tab you go to, which model you have open, it'll always try to just send that one to whatever your 3D print utility is. So what we need to do is we need to take all of this, I'm gonna use control X to cut it, and I need to put all of that down here in this command created. And there's something that we need to be careful with here. So in Python, the indents are extremely important. The way that things line up matters. So for example, this whole def command created, this is left justified, it's in the first column. So anything that happens underneath it, all of this stuff needs to get tabbed over. And the second problem we have is that this export manager thing needs to, we need to make sure that it's in line with the for loop and it's not underneath it. And the reason for that is because if this is tabbed over, then the program's gonna assume it's part of this for loop, but if it's back here, it's gonna assume it happens after the for loop runs. In cases like this, it probably would work either way, but in a lot of cases, you want the for loop to run before the next thing happens. So all of that, just simply copying it to a different place in the code should fix all those problems. So we're gonna save it, control S, and just to, again, kind of remind ourselves how the program flows. So everything up here at the start it's pulling information about the API and it's pulling in information about the application. So that's Fusion itself. And then this is information about the name of the little button that we put in the UI and the tooltip. And then the rest of this, all this is doing is it's creating the button in the UI for us. This section here is talking about what to do when you stop the app. And then basically it's deleting the button from the UI. And then down here, this is what happens when we actually press the button. Uh, so this, the command created is where everything needs to happen. So again, when I did this originally, that problem basically wasn't apparent because I 
built the app, I ran it, I started it, and then played with it. So here you can see it's still checked run at startup. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out Fusion and we're gonna restart it and see if it's in our UI. There was also a happy little accident that happened. And because the default um, add-in that we got from Fusion automatically puts the button inside of the utilities section, for whatever reason, there is now just a button there. All right, so you can see here at startup, now we have send to Creality Print on the insert menu. It should be on all the insert menus. And then utilities, you can see it's right there. Even if you go to this dropdown, it's, it's not listed there, but for some reason it sticks it there. I'm not quite sure why, but it's now there. All right, so that fixed the first problem. It runs at startup. The second problem is we wanna make sure that we can actually send multiple files. So I'm gonna go ahead and open two files here. And we're gonna start by sending the shark. This should open up Creality Print for us. And hopefully what we see is the shark model. All right, so everything looks good there. We'll close it out. Then I'm gonna go over to the pumpkin, send to Creality Print. The same thing should happen. It starts to launch the application. And now you can see the pumpkin is there. And I did actually print this pumpkin. It's, it's pretty huge, um, but everything looks good. So those two problems that kind of came up were both fixed with the same thing. And it was just simply an issue of where I put the code inside of that program. So those kinds of things, again, the indents or the tabs and the location in that default add-in all have an impact. It didn't matter for the default utilities add-in, and I'll just go ahead and run that so we can kind of remind ourselves. The default utility is this gear icon, and it has show or send a palette, show my palette in the command dialog sample. These didn't matter because they weren't working with any geometry in the model. They, they didn't care if there was anything inside of the file, and they just opened up a little dialog. So those didn't care if there was any 3D geometry. The rest of what we did actually mattered. We had to have a component with geometry in it in order to send it to the 3D print utility. So now that we understand that, hopefully this helps fix any additional problems on your end. If you stop this and you have it set to run at startup, now it should automatically run at startup for you. And you should also be able to export whatever model you have currently active or currently on inside of Fusion. So hopefully that helps. And again, I do apologize for the issue in the first one. It worked again as we went through and then you know these problems come up, but hopefully this helps you fix it. If you have any more questions or problems, please let me know. I'll do my best to respond and make sure that we have a fix. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.